Hi everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and I'm here to finish that art swap I started with Ayala Art and Mixed Media on YouTube. Now if you check my little eye up there, my little eye card, I have links that you can quick, go click to see what she did with my painting and how she started what I'm about to open here. I haven't looked, I haven't, I'm going to be surprised with you, it's super exciting, I'm really thrilled about it. So we're gonna be opening this and then I'm gonna, I don't know, come up with something, paint something, and then I'm gonna send that back to her and she's gonna send what she painted back to me. And then we get to collect each other's art. It's pretty exciting. Um, this is sort of my version of Happy Mail and because of that, I also have another package to open for me, Leola. She does those gorgeous necklaces you guys are seeing on Facebook. I don't know what she sent me. You know how excited I am that she sent me something. I'm really thrilled when I get stuff like this. She got it right to my, my post office box and I'm really thrilled. So I'm gonna open this one first. We're gonna discover about the necklaces first, just real fast. Ooh. 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 Can I ooh anymore? But ooh, all right, I got cool cards. So can you guys see that? Look what she sent me. Are you dying? I'm dying. Are you dying? I'm totally dying. This is the best thing I've ever seen. I'm gonna wear this everywhere. I'm literally wearing this to the next little art thing that I've got to do because these are incredible. Are they not? In They're so pretty. Leola, thank you. These are gorgeous. So, uh, Leola Burgess Butcher, this is her. Look at me, I'm showing her card right there. Hopefully you guys can uh, see this. So you can buy these from her. Um, and now I have, I have some, I have some originals. So I'm excited about that. And we got a note from her. And it's a long one. So I'm not gonna read it on the air, but Leola, I'm gonna read this right after. Because, <laughs> you know, and it might be private, so I'm gonna put that over here so I can read that after. Now here is the pack package I got from Martha. Again, iCard, if you wanna go see how she created what I'm about to open. Let's find out. Let's use scissors. And wow, well, she's really good at packaging. Let's find out what she sent. That's why I don't have paint out yet, because I don't know what I'm looking at and I don't know what colors I'm gonna use, and I have kind of a thought of what I'm gonna do because she's she's doing a 29 faces challenge. There's a bunch of people, if you search 29 faces right now, you're gonna find people who are doing daily faces. They paint a face like every day for 29 days across this month. If you were into big eyed girls and waifs and all that, that would be something that you could find, and she's definitely doing that, I think. Ooh, so this is a canvas board. Ooh, and it's wrapped in wax paper, which is, you know, really good because if you've got acrylic. So let's, this is what she sent me. All these fabulous colors, fabulous colors. All right, there in the up close cam. You guys can really see that. I'm so glad we have an up close cam because we're gonna need it. And we have a note. Hey Cinnamon, thanks for playing with me. Do anything you want to this canvas. You can use the same uh, um, wrap to mail it back if you want. Well, I think I ruined that. But I'll get it back to you intact, don't worry. It'll be totally fine. All right, so we got this and um, what are we gonna do here? Let's look at it some different directions. You know, hot up top. You know, I'm really feeling the cool colors up top. And I'm kind of feeling this space over here. And I know I'm thinking of doing kind of a face. So, um, how about we do something like a sugar skull? Would that be fun? I think that could be fun. So, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this really cool thing where you can take a canvas and you use the canvas to do a half face, okay? So I'm going to kind of block in my face shape, which is that I'm going to make a kind of almost rounded egg. Obviously, as always, I will ask Chuck to help me with the traceable, right? And I'm going to even bring that up to the top for a second, right? Because actually it would round out, but for the purposes of that, I don't know if you guys, yeah, you can see that there. Oh, I love the up close cam. And I'm doing a half face, guys, is what I'm doing. 
So when I'm sketching on my own canvases, I'm actually, I often do that. I like get a line, I adjust a line, I tweak a line. Now, if this is up here in my forehead, about right around this area, I'm going to want to make a brow line. I'm going to make that socket shape that I know is right here because there's a big eye socket that's there. And I'm going to do a half nose, right? Half nose. So that's a little curve line in. And at the bottom of it, I'm going to curve like a little smile up and another little parentheses out here and I'll get a little nose in. And then I'm going to come and bring a mouth here because we know that we're going to have at least a mouth under the nose. That's about two fingers under, and that still gives me a little room for my chin. Right? So I'm going to do the whole face here in this half space, and I'm going to put my eye shape in, which is, you know, almond. It's like an almond. You know, if you're working these out. Remember, we'll have a traceable of this because I don't want drawing skills to be what stops you from doing something. And there's lots of places to work on those drawing skills. You could go to Ayala's uh, YouTube channel and work on those face skills. You can go to all kinds of places on YouTube, work on faces. I've got a lot of friends out there doing that and I love what they do. So I've got this sketched in. Super easy, super fun. Now I'm going to put out some paint colors. Um, so if she's going to be um, a sugar skull, I'm actually going to paint her in. I'm going to start out with a little white a little black and maybe a little blue to shade her in because oftentimes those the faces are powdered or lightened to be like a skull so I wouldn't do a traditional skin tone interestingly enough I wouldn't even try to start that this is dog's name purpose I don't want it I'm gonna do some phthalo blue now I'm probably going to put out, I'll put it out now, I'm definitely probably going to use some, oh my goodness, cad red at least, and some dogs in purple, and some for sure cadmium yellow medium that I'm going to put out. I'll have a materials list down there. I may or may not put out the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre. I'm not actually sure yet. And I'm going to grab my half inch angle brush, which as you know is my multi-tool. And I'm going to... I'm going to make a very light gray. I'm going to add a little blue to it though. Because I don't want just black and white. I want some tonality to it. And I'm going to start painting in, ooh, look, she's got this interesting texture here, which I can completely work into the sugar skull that I didn't know until I started painting it. Look how that's shown up. Can you see that on the up close cam? See that texture right there that she's, she's put in? So I'm going to think about that texture a little bit, right? Now I know my socket's going to be a little bit darker, so I'll probably come in with some darker tones there. Just getting my paint on, like I always do. You know, that first layer of paint, that underpainting, you know, even though I've got kind of an underpainting going here with what she's already sent me, you know, I've got to get the underpainting of this face going. See, I'm going like this. Now, one of the things I'm going to do coming up is I'm going to do a live beginner, beginner broadcast. I'll put that up on the schedule so you can see what that's going to be. Where we just talk about like stuff like what if you've never touched a brush. All the stuff like how I work my paint where I go from the little edges, how I'm mixing it, like really drilled down. Drilled down because a lot of people have been asking for that and I'm thinking that's something that I will absolutely do. So this very light gray happening here. I'm going to leave a little space where I have my nose in because I know I'm going to come in darker. And I'm going to get a little more blue and a little more black on my brush. And I'm going to come in under my eye socket. What I'm, what I'm doing is creating sort of just, this is going to be darker right here. And it's going to come along the nose. You know, I'm blocking in values. A lot of times you'll hear me talk about blocking in. I'm blocking it in, right? What I'm saying is, 
I'm going to want deeper, darker shadows in these spaces. And so I'm sort of putting those in. I'm going to adjust them later, right? I'm gonna work them later. I just know that I want them there now. This is gonna be really interesting on her little face. And this won't take too long. This little sugar skull won't take too long. I'm gonna get some more of this dark color and work a little uh, neckline here, I think that I want her to have. Get some more paint. I want a little neckline here, of some sort. Darker color. So this is a little more, if you're feeling kind of confident in what you're doing, you could follow along with me pretty easily. If you're real, real new, you know, enjoy this, watch this, but do some of the other paintings so that you're a little more ready for the art language as it's coming, right? So it's not as stressful. You'll be here before you know it and then come back and do this, you know, because uh, on some of them I like explain every single step and every single action. It'll be like that um, live where, you know, we talk about the beginning stages of painting and, and what you can expect. I'm getting a lighter tone here. Basically what I'm going to be doing is creating a lighter value over the cheek space and then a darker value under the jawline and around the eyes, and then maybe possibly a little bit at the temple, and we'll shape out the nose a bit. So those are the things that I'm looking for, you know, as I'm painting. And I am lightening up the space, because I know, you know, she's got her little sugar skull going. We'll work the lips in a little bit and probably shade all that out just a little bit. Maybe I'll add a little lightness right here. And I'm gonna come back with a dark color right under here. Just shade that out. Just shade that out, creating that line. My pressure is about a medium brush pressure. Medium brush pressure. You know, as I'm looking at this, I'm trying to decide if her hair is going to be down or it's going to be back. And there's a weird part of me that thinks it might be back. So just in case I'm going to put it back right across from the eye here, I'm going to imply that there might be an ear that we're just seeing peeking out. Now I may take this out and I may leave this in. Hard to say. I just want that little shape there just in case I choose to put it in. And I'm going to put some white here which will eventually be the eyeball and the socket. I'm just gonna work that in. Real simple shapes that we are thinking about in paint areas that we're blocking in. A lot of times I rough these in real fast because I know I'm gonna reshape them out as I go. And there's just no point in being stressed about it right now. I'm gonna get a smaller brush. I'm trying to find a smaller brush. Oh. Half inch bright. Love my half inch brights. And I'm going to kind of work the nose a little bit, even though I may come and do that dark shape that you often see on sugar skulls right there. I'm going to work some of this lighter just to feel like, all right, I'm working this shape out. But I probably will come through and darken this in some decorative way. Right. In some decorative way, we'll do something. And I'm going to start thinking about the lips. And, and I'm going to stay in the black and blue. I'm going to resist getting over into my red. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to put in what I feel like is my mouth shape, my basic mouth shape, which is this little smile. It's very rude. It's very rudimentary. It's, it's not complicated. It's just a little guideline. And I'm going to give myself a, a little lower lip here. And I know I'll have a little shadow here. So maybe I'll think about that line. But I know this is gonna go up much further. And now I'm looking at this, I'm like, right, I gotta drop this chin down just a little bit for it to make sense. I'm gonna pick up some white paint, shade some of that out. I want that to be 
be down there a little bit and we'll work that out in a second. Where did my towel go? I don't know. That's so funny. I'm always losing my towel. I have a towel, I put a towel down, and then I lose my towel. Oh, a towel just mysteriously appeared. I don't know where it could have come from. <laughs> the towel fairy's in it. And I'm gonna add some more of this light color right here. Maybe a little bit along this jawline. So I'm just shading. Just shading this out and building up the shape that I'm looking to create. Because actually there's going to be another shadow under her lip. All right, so we've sort of adjusted this line a little bit. And we don't mind. We don't mind adjusting the line. We don't mind adjusting the line. I'm going to take some lip here. And by only doing half of it, we give ourselves a little break from some of the things that make figure drawing a bit of a tribulation. I'm going to shade where the lips meet, pulling this out just a small amount. I'm also going to add a little shadow coming up underneath. I'm going to add a little shadow just coming up underneath. Blend that out. I'm gonna pick us up, pick up some lighter color here. Pull this lip down a little bit. And a lot of this is about creating the shadows between these two shapes. Cause they're sort of like rounded <laughs> tubes. You don't think of it, but these two, these are muscles and they're rounded and you're pulling them out. And I'm going to also add some shadow cause this is curved in, they're curved in like this. So before I add the decorative elements, I do want to create some of these lights and darks. You know, that would be happening inside the lip. And I'm going to get a real dark dark. We're going to start talking about that and that's probably something I'll have to come back with later. I'm going to take my black and my blue, mixing it together. All right, black and my blue. I'm going to come here to my nose and I'm going to think about something here, adding that darkened nose that you see on a sugar skull. I'll bring it out over here. Now I'll still have to do all my nose shading that I would expect to do on this nose. But I will be doing it in these colors, right? So let's get a little white, bring it over to our blue. Let's add a little highlight right here. A little highlight right here. I wonder what Ayala is going to think of this. You know, I think a lot about my friends when I'm painting. I think about the good things that they bring into my life. Um, it can help me. You know, there's a couple ways you can work through stuff when you're painting. You can put everything that's like really giving you trouble in your life onto the canvas and really just purge it all out, right? And that's one way to feel much better while you're painting. But another way that you can feel a little bit better when you're painting is to think about all the positive things in your life while you're painting and then let that help you feel better. This one leaves me, that way leaves me with a painting I actually want to keep. And the other way, I'm going to add a high, high highlight right here. Another high, high highlight. So that we keep that shape going. So I want the shape to be true. So we've got this crazy sort of little sugar skull little nose happening here. And I'm going to go again into my blue and black stronger in the blue this time, right? You can even add a little purple to this mix. And I'm going to come around the eye and start giving that that deep socket that I need to give in the eye. 
Now these eyeballs will be a little bit bigger than is realistic for a human being. It's not quite a big eyed girl, but it's a little bit like a big eyed girl. Arcing this up. Just arcing this up. You know, we're going to do a really simple sugar skull soon, probably before Halloween, live. Something that's just real fun and easy to do and is a good starting place. I'm going to make a little scallop pattern around her eye. So that's a little decorative. Get a little bit of this blue out, a little bit of this purple out, and pull a little bit of white. It gives me a very nice color. And right here, just underneath this, I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. We're going to keep working that lighter and lighter. Right. Come up here, a little lightness right here. A little more lightness right there. Got that little shape happening. I like that, see? So that's very interesting. And you know, we could take some of this above the brow line now that I'm looking at it in shape. You could say some of these shapes might come up a little bit above the brow line. And that could be nice for our pattern. And we'll come back with some white line and some different work there. Right now, let's get a small detail brush. Right, this is a detail filbert, but you could do your detail round, you could do a detail bright. Any of your detail brushes will work for that. And we're going to come in between the two lips, we're going to make a defining dark line. And this dark line is going to go actually past the shape of the mouth into that skull smile is what we're going to do. We're going to take it past that and I'm going to pull down to a point to show a little pucker in the lip and a little shading. And then I'm going to pull a little of this darker line up. And this is before I'll pull the teeth, right guys? This is before I'm going to start putting those decorative teeth in there. I'm still working out some of that lip shape. Okay, and details are really nice when you're working out the lip shape. I'm going to come down underneath here and still pull a little shadow happening. Shape that lip a little bit. So I got to fix that lip shape. And sometimes you'll be doing that. Sometimes you'll be like, oh, I got to fix that lip shape. A lot of times you guys will write me and say, well, it's, it's, it's hard or the picture isn't really pulling the way I want it to. And you know what? Sometimes it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't always have to pull exactly correctly. You can adjust. You can let the paint dry. You can come in and be like, how can I shape that the way I want to shape it and still have it be how I want it to be and work those work those details out. You know, how am I going to do that? I come up with a very light highlight up at the, here at the top. Light highlight, pull some of those down into this dark. This blue here, this dark highlight, come above the lip, under the nose because there's a darker shadow happening right here. And we'll use that blue and black to create that shadow cast underneath the nose. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And you know, step back, look at your piece. And wherever you feel it's not pulling how you want, you go back and get it to do it. 
going to get a little blue and white. So pull like this a little bit. You just put back what you've got to put back. where you need to put it back. And that will happen a lot to you as you are painting real, like looking at something like, well, I don't really like, I don't like how that shape is, or that doesn't feel like what I'm trying to do. And if you're seeing it, you can fix it. It's an interesting thing. If you're seeing it, you can fix it. It's when you can't see it that it's hard to fix. I've got a nice highlight here I'm going to put along the lip. Just along the lip. In the center here. And I'm going to get my detail back. Getting in my blue and black again. That little, that little, that little shadow I've been trying to get, and now I'm feeling actually much better about that. Feeling better about how those lips are shaping out for me, and I feel like I could put in my black here. I'm gonna thin it with water a little bit to get the flow to improve because I'm a heavy body paint. Now, if you're on a craft paint, you don't really have to do that. The flow is already good. Your issue, your issue is not flow. Generally, the issue is coverage. On a heavy body paint, you've got to thin it with water a little bit to get good flow, but then you also have good coverage. So I'm going to take these black lines across her lips, coming down. Oh, I think I took that one too far. I'm going to do it a little bit here, but they're going to be a little bit smaller as I go up. I'll erase that one with paint that I feel like I took too far. And that'll happen. Sometimes you feel like you take them too far. You don't have to worry about them. You can fix it later. You want it to go above the lip line? Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. And I'm looking at that now thinking, I don't really want that above the lip line. So I can erase that with my paint. Look at me. I'm erasing it with my paint. And I go, oh yeah, that's what I like much better. I like that. And I might curve this line back a little bit. Take it really across the face and curve this just a little bit. And that might become something decorative. Now I'm going to get a little red and black. And I'm going to come in and do the tear duct in this eye shape, which is sort of this little round. And I'll come on the inside of this eye. And a lot of this in here I'm going to be doing more in red and black. I don't know if you guys can see this. You guys see that? You're working that inner tear duct in. And I'm also going to work this kind of red and gray. I'm going to create a little shadow up here on my eyeball. So the eyeball is quite round and the lid casts a shadow. And I know I'm going to start want to start working that. And I think I need to get to my half inch bright is where I really need to be. We got a little purple to that. There we go. Get a little bit of white. Because what I don't want, interestingly enough, you would think I would want white in here. I actually only want a little bit of white on the whites of her eyes. We're gonna have those be a little redder than you might think. That's gonna give a really cool effect. I feel more emotive. Come back into the 
black and red. bit, shading it around this outer corner. Might even get some stronger red here. I haven't rinsed my brush though, so there's a lot of pigment in there. Like some of this and then a little bit of the red. That's gonna feel real, but just enough off that it's gonna give it a supernatural feel. Got some just white. I don't want. I want some of it on my brush. Some of it here. And I'm interestingly enough, before I've ever put the pupil in, I'm doing some shading on what is the whites of her eyes. And that is a very helpful thing to do. If you can see that there, right, right here on the up close cam. I don't know how well you can see the red of that and how that impacts that. Maybe if I hold it up to this camera. There you go. You can see the amount of tonality that she, we've got going on in there. Now I'm gonna take some purple and some blue. And I'm gonna make the pupil in here now. Make sure I've got on up close cam. So I'm definitely going to take it down almost to the bottom lid, but not quite. Hopefully that is helpful. Down almost to the bottom lid. letting it be quite large and then I've got to come and put a shadow back. I'm gonna get right into what I had over there. Long underneath this eyelid, I'm gonna pull this shadow down right across the eye. And if I need more black, I'll pull more black. Pull this shadow down. And if you've been doing a few eyes with me, you're gonna realize this shadow is an important element the eye. Pull it down, pull it down. And now I can get into my smaller brush. All right. I'm going to come along the upper lid with just black. Iris. Iris is going to be open pretty big on her. Iris is going to be open pretty big on her. So you've got that there. Right. Now I'm going to come in with a little more black. Darken some of that on one side. Okay. And then I'm going to get into this eye, a little purple over here, but with a lighter color. Into this eye around the darkness of her pupil with a lighter color. Come in with a very dark color. And get the fluidity on this if you're having trouble getting coverage. If it's not covering, make sure you're working how fluid your paint is. It's definitely what you want to be doing, working how fluid your paint is. This outer rim of her eye needs to be dark, just a thin line.
And I'm pulling even some of this color up into the shadow. So now we're starting to get that definition. Now I'm going to take just the blue, just a little bit of white. It's really a light color. And I might even, to pop it, add a little yellow so it becomes an almost turquoise. In here, I'm going to add this fleck of just luminescent color coming up. As if there's a high light that's shining through the glass of her eye. Also, because these colors are not natural, it will give her a supernatural feeling. Not Sam and Dean supernatural, but still supernatural. Geek referencing, and that's looking pretty good. She's looking pretty good. All right. Then you're going to take a little white, and I like to make sure it's just slightly off white. So if gray gets into it or whatever gets into it, that's always okay with me. Right across here, I'm going to add a little highlights and then I will also here out into the eyeball as if they are wet and there's a little water reflecting on it I think this is gonna trip Ayala out Martha out I do I think she's really gonna like this now I'm gonna I'm gonna darken them and create a very dark shadow at the bottom of this socket and then run a very light wet highlight up there on the lid Right. So I'm going to come here and create this dark shadow just where the eyeball is sinking in and around this corner. Even right here at the tear duct because I'm going to come in and create a highlight like right along it. Get your highlight color. Again, I really hate to have pure white, so but I want it to be quite light. Compared to everything else, it'll feel light. But it actually isn't. And I'm going to just create a line of, even in here in the tear duct, a couple spots of white showing like the tear duct along below the shadow. Below that shadow. The eyeball. If you need to thin your shadow out, thin your shadow out. And see, then you've got that sort of white highlight happening. The light, light color going right along here. Right along here, you're going to want a light, light color. A little bit here, under here. I'm going to put it just a couple places around the eye, just to create that definition. That's really fun, right? I love this, it's like snake skin or something. I'm not sure, I'm gonna pull something with it. I haven't really, I'm gonna get some just white and I'm gonna create some defining. I'm gonna create some dots along this outer edge and then just white. Just something decorative, something thoughtful. Let's add some red. You can add a little purple to your red, but some red in, the, in this lining here along the face. So let's, let's create a little design on the chin like you might see of a little flower. And again, fluidity will help you with this. Fluidity can, can make a big difference. A little petal here, up into the lip. It. And then we'll just say that there's some little tendrils happening out into the face. And then I'm going to add some of this red lining. It's too much fluidity. I'm going to dab it with my towel.
And I'll just take some dots here. A lot of this is like kind of fun because you can think about like what the patterns are and what you want to do and how you're how you're working your sugar skull out. I'm gonna finish this in something a little more decorative now I'm looking at it. Up in her forehead where we've got this interesting texture. Hmm. Hmm, maybe a little blue and yellow. Create a nice green, add some white to it. Maybe we can do something up here. Come with like a little leaf, but it's over this sort of scale texture. And that's very interesting. Scale texture. Just some sort of net that she put on this piece that's interesting to work with. I like to think that the mixed media artists are like alchemists. They're like the alchemists of the art world. And they have all these tinctures and interesting things to work with and they play with them in their studio and they're a little bit like magic labs. You know, like Harry Potter wizards. Is the feeling that I have sometimes about that world. I'm coming with a darker defined line for this piece right here, just to define it a little more. I just feel like she's got to have, you know, I'm absolutely not familiar with like a, a lot of this in, in real traditional culture actually has symbolism and has meaning. Mine here is just decorative. There's a completely different reason for making it. I'm adding a little highlight to this, a little highlight to that. Come in with a much stronger one. Probably gonna have to put up some more white at some point. We got that there. It's going down. And I feel like I want some red up into that. And then we've got to figure out what's going on with her hair. Or what we're doing over here, or some red here. I feel like that's necessary. Like there's a little bloom peeking out in these leaves. I'm literally making this up as I go. So you know, sometimes you'll see stuff and you'll be like, I really feel like that needs to be there. Maybe it does. Add some lines here. Some lines here. Here we go. Some lines here. She's looking actually pretty good. I'm actually kind of digging her. I'm actually kind of really enjoying her. And I feel like I'm going to do a dark hair. So I'm going to do a little purple and a little, uh, not a little purple, a little blue and a little black. And I'm going to come here. Maybe create a little tendril between these two events. I'm going to just generate the background of some dark, dark, I think. It's just some fun stuff for me. I'm thinking about it, go around the ear. I'm still trying to decide about that ear. And I'm just not feeling the ear, so I'm going to take it out. <laughs> and you're like, wait, you made me paint an ear and we took it out. Yeah, sometimes you do that. Sometimes you're like, yep, not feeling it. Take it out. Take out what you're not feeling. It's not worth it. You're not feeling it. You're not feeling it. Just take it out. 
just art. You could always paint it back in if later you woke up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat and said, you know, I think the whole painting was dependent on that ear. Just put the ear back. I think I will move this to the side for just a second to get a flow. Tendrils here. Trying to decide how much of her hair I want to put in. Then I don't want to remove all of Ayala's art over here. You know, and I feel like that was almost a moon there, so I may come back and move some of that out. So I cut that there, and I'm going to come in with a little white and highlight some of this hair. Just to create a little, where is my white paint? A little highlight to the hair as we're going. And I think she's looking pretty good. Kind of happy with it. It's a fun collaboration. Because you do stuff you might not necessarily normally do. You might not necessarily ever do. And I really enjoyed it. I was really happy to be contacted to do it. Uh, it was really fun. I hope you're going to... If you haven't already seen what she's done, I hope you'll go over there and check it out. Because I sent her a very interesting little canvas, I feel. And she did a really cool thing with it. She made this beautiful kind of aquatic, well, really almost a mermaid. I really like that. You know what, I'm going to come back and play with that texture because I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to... Put a flower there, that's what I'm gonna do. She gave me that texture there, I'm gonna work it. So I've got my red and purple. I'm gonna come. Laying these little ever radiant brush strokes out. Do a couple more of those. Another one here. She needs some flowers. And then I'm going to get some white. And add some highlights to these petals. Pull it out. Just real simple stuff there. Just a simple, 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 simple little shape. Simple, simple, happy, fast, little. And I'm not doing 29 faces, but this could, you know, definitely have been part of it if I was working on that. Collab with her. Now see, we've got flowers up there. Oh, got flowers up there. Give it a little greenery. A little bits of greenery, and, and I think we're good. We've done. We have collaborated, which you know, in your life, life is a collaboration, right? With friends and people that you care about, and your family, it absolutely is. Pretty happy with her. I think she could have maybe slightly more whimsical hair. And blow around. More tendrils. Let's take that out so that could be there. Oh, I like that. Slightly more whimsical. Presses. You know, you just look for that stuff. Where can I add that whimsy? Can I do? In my world. Now maybe 
maybe a little of this and a little of that. Just to pop a bit here and there. Just a little bit of pop. All right, I will show this to you on this camera real fast. How is that? A little happy, imaginative collaboration with Ayala Art. I card. Obviously, check description for where I hide everything. So if you like this, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share it, tell your friends. We will do a highly instructed one of these that's planned out so uh, for real beginning, beginning artists. So we've got the beginning, beginning, how to do your brushes, just a whole bunch of information there on a live broadcast. And we'll do a beginning sugar skull coming up soon and another sort of romantic piece coming up as well. So check upcoming live events for what could be happening soon. And I will see you guys at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.